So yes. we're getting ready to kind of turn the page a little bit. We, we heard everyone's background and gotten some good information. But now we want to know what is life like afterwards, after you've gotten out? Um, Minister Gamble, be, yes. before, before, we, before we go there, I want to say something. Okay. Regarding what, what Jennifer shared, which was really powerful. And there are three phases, but there's mm -hmm. also the chemical impact, the actual chemical impact on your brain right. when you are subjected to abuse. The size of your brain changes. Mm. It shrinks in its capacity and its ability to discern right from wrong, past from present. This is a physical thing that happens. The other thing that happens when you go through that three-phase cycle, some people call it a four-phase cycle, is that you have different chemicals that are released at different times, right? You have a different chemical release in your brain when that fight or flight kicks in. You have a different chemical that kicks in when you're feeling sad and depressed. You have a different chemical that is secreted in your brain during that honeymoon phase when everything's wonderful and, and the intimacy is great and they're holding your hand and whispering sweet nothing into your ears. You get a different chemical that's released. And so what happens in the example that Jennifer gave, right, where he hit her in the stomach and then, and then she found herself running after him. This is something that victims often don't understand. It feels like the only thing that will make you feel better in the throes of abuse is acceptance, not from everybody else, from the one that hurt you. It's from the one that hurt you. And this is why you can encourage a victim. They can have family that loves them, pouring into them. And it's like it pours in and it seeps right out. Because what they're craving is acceptance from the one that damaged them in the first place. Mm -hmm. And all of that is part of it. It's what gaslighting does. It's what coercive control does. It's what emotional abuse does. Without anyone putting their hands on you. All of this damage is done. And so it's important for victims to understand that this is not about your intelligence and it's not about your education. Amen. It's not about Amen. how deep and mystical you are or how many degrees you have. <laughs> I have five. Okay. It's not about that. Amen. How articulate you are. Your brain is a hot mess. Mm -hmm. You're being subjected to abuse. It is like scrambled eggs up there. I don't care how smart you are and you have less to work with. That's just the truth. The good news is that that can heal if you get away from that toxicity and don't introduce new toxicity. <laughs> if you can get away from the toxicity, all of that, it'll start to settle down and you'll be able to hear the truth and you'll be able to accept that, okay, I made a really bad choice, either initiating this relationship or staying in it after they initiated it. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to accept that and understand that it doesn't make you less of a person to be able to walk away from that. Okay, so, but there's this whole chemical thing that's going on and this is why it's like, but I need to hear from them that they're mm -hmm. sorry. I need to hear from them that I'm beautiful or if you're a man, that I'm handsome, that that I have a, a purpose in their life, that I'm a I need to hear that. And I'm willing to endure whatever I have to endure to hear them say that. Amen. Amen. I saw, amen. I saw. I saw. I'm getting a message from God. Look on your face. So that's why I started <laughs> looking at you. I was just like, okay, look. But and and it's good. And that's another good point. So that those who are being abused don't think you're losing your mind and that you're going crazy. There are some physical things that are going on. If that's going to help you to accept it more, to know that there's some physical things going on within your mind, then grasp that and take it. And, and get the help that you need. So know, and just, know that. just to uh, reiterate off of you, Apostle Cheryl, because I know when I left, when I finally got to the pinnacle point, because there's a pinnacle point of abuse, when you will open your eyes and you will wake up and you will be like, oh my God. And I will never forget the night. There was a night and it was the pinnacle point where I was like, I have got to get out of this. I cannot, because I'm going to die in this relationship. Not only was the emotional and the verbal abuse and uh, the financial abuse and just, uh, there are things that I, I can't, the list is so large, I don't have time to discuss it all. But that when I, when that night, 
I remember I was outside with no shoes on in the cold. He had locked me out of the house, took my car keys, ran outside, was trying to take my car in the middle of the night. I ran outside after him to get my car keys. And he ran back in the building and locked me out of the building. And I'm standing outside with no shoes on in 30 degree weather. And I just broke down. And I, when I finally left and I moved and I relocated undisclosed, the first 30 days here, I, I was telling Apostle Cheryl, I said, there were days I just laid in the bed and I, I wasn't depressed. I wasn't angry. I wasn't sad. I was just trying to cope with the peace because I had been in dysfunction for so long. I was, I was full of anxiety and, and worry and, and fear without even realizing that my mind had been so tormented. So there were days that I would just literally, I stopped going to church, not because I don't want to go to church or because I'm rebellious or I'm lawless, but I needed to heal myself. Um, so I want people to be encouraged, though, that, you know, if you, it's certainly if you have your heart turned towards the Lord he will have somebody praying for you. You know, Amen. when Papa Melanie was going through that, I, I I would just, and I know it probably seemed random. I would just call and say, okay, where are you? She run. She run. What's going on? Always. He would just, she was always he would, checking on me. He would put her on my heart and she would just like stay there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Find her. Okay. And so God will always have someone praying for you. It could be someone that you don't even know is praying for you. Right. But, but he is faithful. And so anybody who's watching this or listening to this, no matter how horrible it is, no matter what type of abuse you are being exposed to, just know that God cares about you and that you matter. And despite the devil's lies, you are absolutely not alone. You have a whole lot of company. Mm -hmm. There are many, many people out here. There's tons of help out here. And so don't believe that there's no help and don't believe that no one will understand. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. Don't accept that. Amen. 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 Sister, um, let's see. Uh, Prophetess Melanie told us what her breaking point was. Someone else tell us when you say, okay, this is, a, this is it. I'm done through. You know, it, it's amazing to me that, you know, sometimes it's something as um, drastic and detrimental as uh, uh, Prophetess uh, Melanie being outside and locked out and then it can be something just as simple as <laughs> this is really really simple as i had my youngest son had a birthday party to go to at after bigs mm -hmm. and my ex-husband knew that and we had decided one would take him one would pick him up mm -hmm. and he looked at me and i said to him the day of the party the boys getting dressed i said so are you going to take them or are you going to pick them up? He looked at me, he said, I'm not doing either. I said, but you know that I have blah, 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 I had stuff that was going on and all that. He said, I don't care. He said, if you want him to go, you'll take him and you'll pick him up. And when mm -hmm. I got in the car with my son, I looked at him and I said, Ramel, I said, you know, your mommy and daddy won't be together forever. And he said, yeah, ma. He said, I see that. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, Ramel, I said, well, how you feel about it? He said, mommy, he said, all I know is that you and me, we're going to be good. And I looked at him. I said, we'll be good, Ramel. He said, yeah, we'll be good. It was a few days after that. No, yeah, that Tuesday, I said the same thing to my uh, middle son, who was in the 12th grade. He looked at me and he said, I, my one son said, I see that. He said, I know that. And he pointed his finger at me, sitting on the floor tying his shoe. And he said, but mommy, you don't deserve to live the rest of your life being miserable. And when my ex-husband came home from work that day, I said, I want a divorce. Mm -hmm. So it started, it was as simple as, it was the last straw. Mm -hmm. It was the last thing. I could not take another thing from him. And I asked him for, for the divorce. Now we had a whole bunch of stuff to go on. So I'm talking about <laughs> hell of prior yeah. to and years prior to, but it was just that particular thing. Mm -hmm. It just was the tipping point for me. Mm -hmm. And I asked him for a divorce. And then unfortunately, 
he tried to kill me three times after that within the <laughs> way she say and unfortunately you just said it all smooth like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wasn't nothing smooth about what she experienced I'm sorry. No. right <laughs> her story is mind-blowing it truly truly is it is mm. and, and it's 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 Everybody's breaking oh is different, right? We all have core values. The, the the most diabolical person in the world has some core values. Mm. They have some things that they swear they won't do, and they won't do it, right? Maybe they won't cuss at their mama, but they might mm. try to kill you, okay? Right. But everybody has something that they that they live by. It's not until that core value that we hold the dearest, when that one is violated enough. Then you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Then you're ready to go. And that's a different thing for each one of us. Mm -hmm. You know, for some, it might be my child said, yep, don't deserve they, this. They started, right? Oh, for, 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 for me, for me they, they, you know, the the love for me was, I can deal with, I can compartmentalize with the best of them. I can compartmentalize. Just like Jennifer just talked about, you learn how to in the military how to put things where they go. Everything has a box, right? Mm -hmm. You don't allow your emotions to determine what you do next, period. You put it in a little box and you push it off to the side and you continue to function and the mission gets accomplished no matter what. For me, the only relationship I've always known was genuine was my relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you tamper with that, you won't win that contest. <laughs> and that's true even today. Okay? You know, you might cuss me out and I determine that you have lost your mind, but you'll be all right eventually. And I'm not even going to feel anything about it because I compartmentalized your foolery. Interfere with what I know God has told me to do. Interfere with my purpose and I'm done with you while I'm looking at you. Amen. Yep. And, and I'm not going, you know, Rosalind's polite. I'm not going to ask you. I'm asking you for nothing. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Looking right at you, done. You figure it out eventually. You know what I'm saying? So for yeah. me, that's what it is. Everything else, I, you know, you know, I, and, and that's not necessarily a good thing because you find yourself tolerating things that God does not even require that you tolerate. Right. Mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. he's not requiring that. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. it's our own system. It's our own core value. So there there's there's something for some survivors. It's their children. For some, it might be they threaten the pet. For some, it might be they threaten the family, or they hit you and that's the cut off for you, or they cussed you out, or they they said something about your mother who's deceased. Whatever it is that brings you to a place where you say, I'm not doing this anymore, mm -hmm. and and whatever goes along with that just goes along with it. Because what I'm not doing is this. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so for <laughs> me, it's, it's always been ministry. That right. I'm just like, that's right. That's you, get you get to your sick and tired of being sick and tired point. I know for me, um, here I'm trying to be faithful, but mm -hmm. from a deployment, but during that deployment, um, he, I, yeah, I suspected him of cheating. And uh, I was eventually right. And so to me, that was pouring salt on the wound. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to mistreat me, but now you're going outside of our relationship after I've been so faithful and kind and compassionate and, and giving and everything else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was, and so there was no fear because now as he's sleeping soundly, I'm looking at him like I'm a woman scorned. I'm crying my eyes out, and now I'm starting to feel resentment, and I want to put the pillow over your oh, head. Burn in bed. <laughs> and I'm like, and so I'm like, okay, that okay, that you got the, the, the mindset, okay, God, my goods, baby. Him. And and I was like, I'm not, I'm too pretty to go to, to go to jail over this oh, food. <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, uh, you done, you done messed up, weren't you? And but I was loyal to a fault, and God knew that. And yeah. something drastic like infidelity, God was like, okay, I need to get, I I need you to see, get you out of there. Mm -hmm. I need right. to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Right, you're not right. paying attention to the signs. But with infidelity, 
you're going to see, you're going to pay attention. Right, right. That was, that was it. The that light was bulb it came you. on and I, I'm like, it's either yeah. him or me. And it was, I'm going to and say. And the thing is, in your case, Jennifer, he's being unfaithful and that's not ever the right thing to do, right? But within the same system that you function in, within the same system in which you are held in high esteem, within that same system. And so that's a completely different level of humiliation and disrespect, right? It's like, it's like you're married to if you're married to a, a bishop or an apostle or a pastor or a deacon or whatever, all right. And he's being unfaithful with the church mother at the same church that you both attend. Y'all sitting on Not the front the row mother. together. Happy you know, to know, lie. <laughs> that's Not the church story. mother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Jesus, baby Jesus, help! <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that that's that's it. It's it's when that thing, that thing, whatever your thing is, when that thing yeah. is crushed, then you can begin to consider that this is not what I need to be doing with my life. Mm -hmm. And doesn't have to come to that. You really can just listen to advocates. You can educate yourself and understand that you deserve better, mm -hmm. and and avoid mm -hmm. all that other harsh stuff. You know. Yeah. Like you said, it takes different things with different people. Mm -hmm. I know my first awakening, well, I guess to finally end it, was when we was at this prayer uh, retreat. And this lady named Rosie got up and she said that my husband is the nicest man in the world. He treats everybody so good. He'll pull out a chair for the ladies. He will do everything. Then she said, I wonder why does he treat everybody better than he treat me? Mm. And she was oh. older. She was older. I guess she's old. She was as old as I am now, maybe older. And I looked at her because this was had been twenty some years ago. I said, "God, that's gonna be me if I don't do something. I'm gonna be rosy if I don't do something." Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of me waking up. Then I began to see how my children would start to try to treat me like he treated me. And I'm like, "Oh no, that's not gonna happen." Mm -hmm. So I ended up having to, he, he finally left once, uh, he wanted to start a business in the house and everything. And I said, no, I don't think you should do that. I said, I think you, you should leave. So then he wanted to go to counseling. After all this time, then he wants to go to counseling. So I was going to pick the counselor. He said, oh no, I'm picking the counselor. Well, they <laughs> ended up going around to the person. He ended up finding, when the Joyce Meyer ministry, I don't know if you all heard of Joyce Meyer, no. but that's my ministry to try to find a counselor. Come to find out, they recommended the pastor who um, sang at our wedding, who I knew. <laughs> oh, God. So, Throw it away. Out, <laughs> you know, he was really like, so we went to them. And I tell people now, do not be a, a married, a Christian counselor if mm. you don't know nothing about the tricks of the enemy. Exactly. Because we went there. And they told us, try not to say anything bad to each other oh. 24 hours. I'm like, wait a minute. Everybody <laughs> might lose their life in those in that time period. But I'm like, <laughs> yeah. we are way past that. So we went home and everything. We tried to do better and, you know, like that. But by this time, I was through. And mm. when a woman gets through, there ain't nothing you can say. Nothing. So we mm -hmm. there. And I was looking like this. And he was talking, they, they were saying, well, brother, why are you, why are you doing this? Why is all this happening? And he was this big elaborate thing, like I love my wife. And I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> they said, well, sister, why are you? I said, well, let me tell you the real story. And when I got through talking, he was like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, and I want a divorce. He fell out of the door, rolling out like this. Because I said, I'm through, and you can't my name. I'm Sister Through. I am through. And, and Minister Kathleen, you know, I want to say thank you because there's a lot of women of God watching tonight, apostles, pastors, prophets, evangelists, and I'm sure that they can agree with me that they thank God for your transparency because in the church, again, as I was speaking earlier, this is covered. It's shoved under the rug. 
it's shut behind the closed door. You know, it's not really dealt with. It, it's we're always, you know, even when he's punching your eye out, you're told to go pray. And I know it's not funny, but it's just how ludicrous, how ludicrous, and how uneducated and in ill equipped the church is to deal with real life issues. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and you know what? Here's the thing, and I am a therapist, so I can say this, and I'm not taking it back. Y'all know what that means when I say that. I'm not taking it back, right? <laughs> <laughs> not taking that. I'm going to say it, and I mean exactly what I'm saying. Any therapist, any therapist, I don't care how many alphabets they have behind their name. I don't care how long they've been doing what they claim they've been doing. Any therapist who knows that you are dealing with emotional abuse, abuse of any kind, and even suggest, fix their mouth to say, come talk to us together. You need to get as far away from them as you can because they will get you killed. Mm. Killed. And then fall back on privacy laws and won't even acknowledge what they knew, okay? You do not take a couple who is experiencing yeah. abuse of any kind and put them in a room together to talk about anything. You don't do that. Because the victim, the true victim, is going to be victimized for sure in yes. the car yes. on the way home. Yep. Yep. Or, you or don't in do that. You don't do that. And, 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 and if it's a pastor or a bishop or apostle or whoever, the fact that they are, and I'm not taking this back, <laughs> the fact that God called you, hallelujah, does not make you a therapist. Come on and teach that it right there. A therapist. Say that loud for the people it, in the back. It doesn't, it doesn't they can't you hear you, Apostle. I mean, <laughs> and, and if you want to help people, go get educated then. Mm -hmm. Do the work. Because a lot of times what happens with ministry leaders, and I am one, so I can say this too when I'm not taking it back. <laughs> a lot of times what happens is, oh, I have a relationship with so-and-so, and you know, we down like four flat tires, and I can influence them. It's already become about you and your ability yeah. to influence. And so my question to everybody who's watching this or who will watch it and who is a ministry leader and, and have had people come to them with abusive relationships is your being their pastor didn't prevent them from getting abused in the first place. What God, makes you think that your presence in their life is going to prevent them from getting abused going forward? If you had that kind of leverage, they wouldn't have been abused in the first place. Your very presence in their life would have prevented that from going down. That's right. That's good. So yeah. this is serious. That's real good. This is serious. Well, you know, yes. you know we, I'm going to talk to him man to man. He ain't stunned you. He ain't afraid of you. <laughs> yeah. They, yes. I, I've also had my uh, the pastor one time I went to him after we tried canceling a couple of times with him together and He's like, well, you got to just decide if you want to stay married. And you know, he took it to the pulpit. Yeah. He took it to the pulpit. I said, <laughs> oh, I I'm out of here. And then they got the other pastor in the church. Mm -hmm. um, but by, mm -hmm. and that's when we found out what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And the pastor told, uh, or with my daughter, and he went and he, uh, he even, he, the whole church, he put him out of the church and everything. So I, I did get support over that, but the, um, previous pastor, mm -hmm. uh, he made it, he would make it look like I was, uh, not a submissive, obedient wife. Mm -hmm. And here I am on my, okay. My third husband, um, <laughs> fourth husband. And, um, the pastor gives us a book. You need to read this book. And it's about how to have sex. And I look at him and I'm like, I'm on my third husband. You really think I need this book? <laughs> it's going to be helping me. Lord, help the church. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I, said, I'm like, I didn't never read it. And he, he 
asked, we go for the next session. He goes, did you read that book? I said, no, we didn't read that book. And he goes, well, I can't help you then. Well, oh, he God. recognized he couldn't help you. Yeah. <laughs> recognize that he couldn't help you okay again un unprepared ill-equipped 